Welcome back to the lab. My name is Dr. Scott Diabolical, Evil Genius, and today I'm going to teach you how to make lightning. This is going to be a deep dive video and I will be going into a lot of detail. If you're just looking for the 8 minute how I did it version, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Let's get started. For this project, you will need a computer programmable lighting control system. A computer, many lights, a plan, rope of the appropriate type, wire of the appropriate type, flood lights, extension cord, And some wire ties. Nice to have, but not required. Some carabiners. And the last thing you'll need is an amplified stereo system. For this prop, you will need a computer programmable lighting control system. But most of the lightning controllers you'll find on Halloween Props websites are not that. They are, in fact, this device a color organ, which is nothing more than a microphone, a VU meter, and a dimmer switch. The louder the sound that goes into the microphone, the brighter the lights are. You have no control over which sound that the microphone picks up, nor do you have any control over exactly when the lights flash. Everything is passive and everything is analog. If that sounds like old technology, it's because it is. Many of these devices promise to produce the effect that I have, but what they actually deliver looks much more like this. There are many computer programmable lighting control systems available, but most of them on the market today are designed to work with pixel style lights. If that's what you have and you're already running X lights, or if you're running a homegrown system with Berkshire VSA, then go ahead and use what you have and let me know in the comments below how well it worked out. For everyone else, I recommend the Lightorama system. Lightorama uses a proprietary cable to interface with output devices known as controllers. These controllers connect directly to your props and allow you to use the computer software to build up small programs called sequences. The sequences are where you choreograph the actions of your props and lights with the sounds and music that you've selected. The thing I like most about Lightorama is that it is the only controller system offering direct support and equipment for alternating current. This allows you to plug in things that you already own, like conventional AC LED string lights, floodlights, angle grinders. Yes, I did check, it only draws five and a half amps. And pretty much any Home Depot prop that plugs into the wall. Also, you don't need any special extension cords. Regular conventional extension cords work just fine. Lightorama's software is also fairly easy to learn and fairly easy to use. Some may find the interface a bit clunky and old school, but I kind of like that. Lightorama also offers controllers for your pixels, any RGB device, any device that can be controlled by DMX, like a moving head or a PAR, and they also make a proprietary servo control board. That servo control board does interface with Track Skull from Monkey Basic, and I've used it to control an animatronic prop that I built on my own. Now, a word of caution. There are a few sites out there that are selling what appears to be a one-box solution. And it very well might be, because that one box is full of prepackaged sequences and Lightorama parts. Now they won't tell you they're Lightorama parts, but they will charge you almost $800 to put those parts into a single box. I'm going to show you how to buy all of the parts you need for a lot less money. We'll start by navigating directly to the Lightorama store.
Once we're there, we'll click on Starter Packages, then scroll down until we find Computer and Traditional Lights Only. Traditional Lights Only, Computer Run Show, and click on it. Then we'll scroll down and find the Residential 16 Channel Starter Package Computer Show and click on it. The Residential 16 Channel Starter Package Computer Show includes everything you need to get up and running. It includes the controller box with 16 outputs, the software you'll need to build up your sequences, the proprietary cable, and the Cat5 cable to connect your computer to the controller box. You'll select License Level Basic, and if you need a Cat5 cable, go ahead and select it. If you already have a Cat5 cable, you can click on None and save yourself about 10 bucks. If you don't mind assembling basic electrical components and you want to save some money, I'll show you a second option. We'll click on Home to go back to the home page. Once we're there, we'll click on the hamburger icon. And we'll scroll down and select Directors, Accessories, and DIY. Then we'll click on Computers, Adapters, and Repeaters. Now we'll click on USB RS485 HS Adapter and Filtered Cable, most popular. Add one to the cart. This is the proprietary cable. Now we'll go back to the previous page and we'll click on Controller DIY Boards and Parts. Scroll down to the second row of products and look for the first two options. The CTB16PC card assembled option includes everything you need. The board is already installed in the enclosure and all you have to do is install the cords and hook them up. You can save even more money by choosing the CTB16PC card assembled add options. Clicking on board plus enclosure strain relief screws plus cord sets will get you everything you need but you will have to install the board into the control box itself. That's a matter of screwing in four screws. It's really not difficult. Finally, we'll go back to the home page and click on free software. Make sure that the basic license is selected and add it to your cart. The basic license is all you will need to create this lightning effect. Now we're ready to check out. If you chose option one to complete package, your cart should look like this. If you chose option two, the assembled card package, your cart should look like this. If you chose option three, the add options card, your cart should look like this. For each option, these are all of the parts you need to order from Lightorama to complete the system. This is the part of the video where other people insert footage of their dog. I don't have a dog. For the branches of the lightning, we're going to use conventional AC LED mini lights. They don't need to be anything special, just the usual kind you find at the big box store. The important thing is that they be AC, mains power current. They plug into the wall. The other two things to watch for is that they should have a green wire or brown or black if that's what you can find and also that they be cool white. That part is critical. Do not use any other color. Do not use blue. Do not use purple and especially do not use warm white. Also do not use incandescent lights. 
If you can't find lights at the big box stores, or if you want to order them out of season, I'll leave a few links to some of the commercial sites I order from in the description below. These sites sell commercial grade lights. They will be more expensive, but they're also a better quality. I recommend either the M5 or T5 style of bulb. Do not use the 5mm, commonly known as wide angle lights. I've tried those, they didn't work very well. Since the mini lights used to make up the branches of the lightning can't support themselves, they needed to be attached to something strong and lightweight that would make up a framework. Before I arrived at the product I used, I tested quite a few, and I'm glad I did. I set up a test and stretched each material between the two trees in my front yard, a distance of about 50 feet, and then I hung a five pound weight at the center. That's about two kilos for you metric folks. I tested monofilament fishing line first. 30 pound test sagged immediately. Within a minute or two, that five pound weight was on the ground even though I had suspended the line about 10 feet in the air. I then doubled it up, same effect. I tried braided spectra fishing line, also 30 pound test, also doubled up, and it sagged to the ground within a few minutes. Mason line wasn't any better. It sagged just as quickly as the monofilament fishing line did. I then tried paracord, but paracord is made of nylon and is designed to absorb shock, which means it also stretches. It lasted about 15 minutes before the weight was on the ground. Then I tried ratchet straps. Because, I mean, come on, you know, rednecks, ratchet straps. But ratchet straps are also made of nylon, and they sagged within a few hours. Finally, I decided to pull out the big guns. Aircraft-grade stainless steel lock wire. And this worked. For a while... The next day when I came out, the weight was no longer suspended because the wire had fatigued from blowing around in the wind and the weight was on the ground. It broke. After an awful lot of Googling and reading through forums, I found that ham radio guys were using a specific type of Dacron polyester rope to suspend their antennas and also to use as guy ropes for their tower masts. This product's available on Amazon and I'm glad I ordered it because it worked. I used the 3 16 inch diameter Dacron polyester in black. This stuff is UV resistant. It is easy to work with. It is very lightweight, has a breaking strength of 750 pounds, greater than anything else I tried. And most importantly, it is indeed low stretch, which means when I strung it between the trees, that five pound weight stayed up there for a week. I'll leave a link in the description below to the Amazon page where I purchased this. I know some of you are wondering why I didn't just use steel cable. Wouldn't that work? It's strong. It doesn't stretch. It's also hard to work with. It's very heavy. It doesn't hold a knot. And if you're using the uncoated variety, there's a very strong chance that it's going to abrade the insulation on all of the mini lights and cause either a short or a fire, or both. And those are two things I didn't want anywhere near my house. Also, it's not any cheaper than the Dacron rope. And unless I had enough stainless steel cable to make the backbone, and I was a masochist, I wouldn't try using it. I think the hassle factor still warrants ordering the Dacron rope. Real lightning bolts are not straight. And if we just ran the mini lights along the rope backbone, straight is what we would see. So to give our mini lights a more dynamic, more squiggly look, I used a soft iron wire. The lights are attached to the wire, and the wire is attached to the rope backbone. In the package, the wire looks like this. I'm not sure if the name of the product is pronounced ook or oak or OOK, but whatever it is, this is the one that I used. 16 gauge galvanized wire, 200 foot spool. I'll leave a link in the description below. This wire is soft enough to be shaped by hand, yet still stiff enough to give the mini lights the required shape.
If you want your guests to hear the lightning and thunder as well as see it, you'll need some sort of amplified sound system. Mine uses a cheap, generic 20-watt amplifier, as well as four speakers that I got from the local thrift store. This isn't exactly the amplifier that I have, but it's close enough. If you order this type of amplifier, don't forget to order a cable to connect it to the computer. The type of cable you use will depend on the output jack of your computer as well as the input jack of the amplifier, so check those specifications. The same is true of speaker wire. Check the type of connection on the back of the amplifier and also the type of connection on the back of the speakers that you purchase. And if you've got a better way to output sound from your computer, then use it. In this prop, the mini lights go a long way towards providing the flickering effect that we normally associate with Halloween lightning. But I still used floodlights to provide an extra punch. If you watched my previous lightning strike video, you know I used this style of floodlight in the past. But I haven't been able to buy them in about five years, and I don't think they're made anymore. This is what I'm using now. It's made of aluminum, and it takes a standard PAR-38 lamp. If you're not a professional outdoor lighting engineer, the word lamp simply means bulb. Shut up, Eric. And PAR-38 refers to the size and style of that bulb. It's this thing, what we normally think of in the United States as an outdoor floodlight. You don't have to buy this specific brand of bulb, but the ones you buy should be LED, they should be rated for outdoor service, and they should be rated for exposure to moisture. They will get rained on, or in my case, buried in snow until April. Also, they need to be dimmable. That's how the Lightorama system works. The control box is nothing more than a bunch of computer-controlled dimmer switches. They also need to be at least 5,000 Kelvin, 6,500 is better. That's going to mean a color temperature of daylight, but look for the specific Kelvin rating on the package. Also, they should be using an E26 base. That's the standard screw-in light bulb base that we use here in the United States. Do not use halogen work lights. These things suck power like a train, and they will blow up a Lightorama system. Also, they are the wrong color temperature. And it's not the 1990s. LEDs exist that produce at least as much, if not more, lumens than what these things do. Don't use them. Extension cords. 16 gauge, outdoor rated. I like the green kind. Wire ties. The lights I buy usually come wrapped in them. Carabiners. These were originally keychains and were left over from some sort of promotion that we were doing at work. That's everything you need to purchase to build this prop. In the next video, I'll show you how to design a system that will work with your haunt, and I'll show you how I built mine. Thanks for watching.